Hey everybody, this is Evan, and I am pleased to announce the anniversary of my Achilles tendon rupture. Last year on the 6th of June, was playing tennis and snapped it and uh, went the non-op route with early weight-bearing protocol, and things have gone really well. Uh, I haven't posted one of these videos in a long time because I didn't really feel as though I had a, a great deal to report, but I do have a few lessons learned that I'll share with you. Uh, but it's, it's great after a year to essentially be back to, um, I've, I've said many times to myself that I'm just about back to normal, but I think I have just about finally arrived at that, at that place. Um, so that's great. I, I don't have to think about the mechanics of walking uh, like I used to because my injured leg was uh, in, uh, weaker than the other. I always had to think about trying to generate more force with that calf to try to push off and try to be balanced and it took a great deal of focus. Now it's more intuitive and I can just sort of relax and, and go. Uh, I have been a little bit complacent in terms of strength uh, conditioning for that leg of late due in some parts to the fact that I travel a lot for work and it's just been rather difficult to get into a routine. And because I, I don't, uh, because it's good enough, you know, it's not great, it's not perfect, but it, because it's good enough to get by and I have been al allowing myself to be complacent, um, that's where I am. Uh, so I'll show you a little bit about what I'm able to do right now. But all, for all intents and purposes, uh, unless I want to run uh, really fast, uh, you know, not that I've ever been extraordinarily fast, but I'm not as fast as I used to be, but I'm at least pushing off with, uh, or, uh, with my heel, with my calf, uh, extending my toe when I run, in a balanced way, and, and that feels really good. So some of the lessons that uh, I think I learned over the course of the last year, uh, one is to uh, listen to your body. Now that's a, that's a great pithy quote, but it really, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that your body sends you a lot of different signals. Uh, one is that even though you will be taken off the boot and starting to walk in two shoes and it's great, and when you, before that, shed the crutches and start walking in the boot, that's great. It's easy to get enthusiastic and feel like uh, I'm, I'm going to launch into this next phase uh, headlong. The thing you have to remember is that that thing is probably even weaker uh, than you give it credit for. It takes a while for all those lateral muscles in your lower leg to get back the strength that they once had. And until that happens, and until you get your balance, uh, until all those muscles are balanced again on both sides, equal strength, um, there's always the potential that you might find yourself stumbling because your leg doesn't react the way that it used to. So just keep that in mind. I personally had a couple of stumbles where I thought, wow, I just hurt myself again. Um, but fortunately, with some rest, uh, everything turned out to be okay. It was just a scare. But, you know, just take that as a cautionary tale. Um, you know, your foot snagging on the corner of a table or a tablecloth or something, and then you put your foot out in front of yourself to, to keep from falling, you could end up re-injuring, uh, doing something that uh, looking back on it, it's gonna seem kind of silly. So just take your time when you're moving and recognize that things aren't quite fully right again. Um, I think one of the other lessons learned, uh, I had a colleague who, uh, had surgery and was going through his physical therapy and his therapist was asking him to do, as it turns out, more than his tendon was ready for and so he re-ruptured in physical therapy. She, I think she was trying to have him do some heel raises or something. Not that heel raises are bad because we all end up doing them, but he just wasn't ready yet. Um, so uh, he, he ended up going non-op on the second round. Uh, but people go in the opposite direction as well. Non-ops have re-ruptures and they end up having surgery. The point being that when things cross the line from good physical therapy, discomfort, and, and, you're, and you're making progress into pain, uh, the therapist isn't going to know that better than you will. So when you feel that go from discomfort to pain, you need to fly the red flag and say, you know what, I think we need to, to knock it off at that point for today, or at least give me a rest, let's try something else, come back to it. Uh, but don't push yourself too far and end up regretting it. Uh, it's much better to have a slow progression through this one time than to hit the reset button because you push yourself too hard too soon. 
Um, protecting your heel. Uh, I made the mistake about 12 weeks in of going to a trade show uh, for work and I put dress shoes on and I put a little gel insert in there thinking that was going to be enough and I was standing on my, uh, on my feet for about 12 hours straight and the heck of it was, I wasn't even walking. I was standing in, in, in place for the majority of that time and it was more than my foot was ready for. And ever since then, I've had a sore heel uh, and I've tried to mitigate it with inserts of one kind or another and it really wasn't up until around nine or 10 months, I think, when I finally discovered memory foam. So Skechers makes a memory foam shoe that I like um, and I bought insoles with memory foam in them that I've put into my other shoes and even my slippers around the house. And it has made a world of difference. Uh, I don't know if it was plantar fasciitis or something similar to it, but the bottom line is my seal hurt like a son of my heel hurt like a son of a gun. So memory foam has made a big difference. Uh, so the point you know, for people who are starting on this path, uh, if you think you've got too much cushioning in your shoes, you might just have enough. Uh, the bones in your feet aren't quite lined up as you're going through this healing, and uh, the more cushion you can throw with the problem the less likely you are to deal probably with the kind of heel pain that I had. So um, that's my two cents on, on uh, insoles. Um, on running, I, uh, I really enjoy running. Uh, and so I started to, to jump back into running. Uh, I have to go back and, and check the videos or, or my, um, my journal to see exactly when that was. But I started off with sort of an old man shuffle where my heel on the injured leg really didn't come up off the ground all that much. I was just kind of gliding. And that was good enough. I was, I was satisfied that I was actually running a little bit. But even doing it in that sort of you know, pseudo running way, um, I would still sometimes, if I tried to run too fast, end up with my Achilles getting a little bit warm. It wasn't painful and it didn't hurt while it was running. It was only after the fact that it would be a little bit sore. And I usually took that as a hint that I needed to do that a little bit slower next time, or sometimes I would actually take a few days off. One time, I pushed it a little bit too hard and ended up taking about two weeks off because I wanted to make sure that it was really ready to go the next time. So my frequency of running, a couple times I got up to about three times a week, and sometimes I would take two weeks off just because I wanted to really be okay the next time. So I'd try to mix in swimming or, or cycling or something. But again, part of that sort of listening to your body, try not to do more than it's ready for uh, as you're going through this. So listening to the signals coming for your, from your Achilles is, uh, I think, my, my next point. And that is that during the initial weeks, you're going to feel all kinds of strange twinges and sensations coming out of your tendon. And that's normal. That's part of the healing process. But after a few months, those should become more rare. So you really need to pay attention to what you're feeling down there. And if you find yourself doing something that causes an unusual feeling, you really need to be mindful of that. And in my case, I think rest was the right answer. At least that's what I did and it ended up working out, So at least so far. But to not do what I used to do when I had an injury, which was to see if I could just plow through it. Um, this is a different situation now where you've had a failure of a component on your body and it's not getting better um, if you tried to, uh, to push it too far. So to try to make sure that you mitigate the chances of a re-rupture, um, just listen to those signals and uh, ratchet it back and take some rest if you need to. So I haven't really been strength conditioning uh, the injured leg as much as I should have. I've been focusing primarily on you know, just the hiking, walking, and running of late. And because of that, the calf isn't as big or as strong as it could be. But it still uh, can get the heel up off the ground. And uh, when I'm running, it gets the job done. But one of the things that I need to do over the next few months is get back into the gym and really start focusing on strengthening it up again to try to get things more balanced.
So after a year, uh, my calf is not as big as it could be, but I didn't have a re-rupture. So there's uh, probably you know a lot of potential for people to uh, recover faster than I did, but I took a somewhat cautious route after the first few months. I was pretty, not aggressive, but, um, but I was leaning forward to try to do as much as I could in those first couple of months because I really wanted to get out of that boot and start getting back toward normal. But once I got to the point where I was running again, I wasn't in the gym all that often, but I also was, was pretty happy about the fact that it was feeling stronger by the day. Um, there was a little bit of a, I guess you might say a plateau, uh, because you know the, the milestones weren't coming as fast as they were during the first few months. But as you get closer to normal, you, your patience for milestones goes way up because you're feeling better, um, much better, certainly than those first dark days after the injury. So um, good luck to, uh, to everyone who's going through this themselves. And, uh, and uh, feel, you know, please do share your own experiences. Uh, one of the things that I've really enjoyed hearing is, is how just the simple act of, of posting my own experience seems to uh, have benefited some folks who are, are looking for answers. Uh, and, and really, there don't seem to be a lot of slam dunk, uh, this is the only way to do it kinds of uh, information out there. So when people are being told you need to be in a cast for this long or you want to go straight into a boot or you're going to do it this other way, um, it's nice to have as much information out there, uh, both scientific, like the studies that I've posted, and if, if, if somehow you can't find them, let me know and I'll be happy to send them to you, uh, that show empirically, statistically, what things look like um, in terms of early weight bearing versus other approaches uh, with long-term casting, uh, and also uh, from a physical therapy standpoint, what different progression paths look like. Um, so there, there's no one answer, and there's not a lot of consistency in the medical community, it seems. And I am not a doctor, but at least anecdotally have you know my own experience to share. And so please share your own so uh, people can benefit from that. So um, thanks, and uh, happy healing to everyone.